Hello my loves, this is a travel guide all about eating and exploring around Brighton. So you're going to want to bring snacks, lunch and maybe even your dinner because there is a lot of food and culture and the seaside and history and shopping and okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. This segment is sponsored by Visit England and Visit Brighton and I'm always so proud and excited to collaborate with such great brand partners and together we wanted this video to show you how you can escape the everyday by discovering the cities again to enjoy a UK safe and short break this summer. As I grew up on the south coast this week away it was a great opportunity to reconnect with the places I've loved, find new favourite spots and create even more memories of my best friend Hannah you'll see later on. Okay, let's start with a journey down from London. Brighton is only a short and direct train ride away and I booked an advance ticket online to save some money, but you can also grab a single or return on the day. London terminals include Victoria, London Bridge, Blackfriars and St Pancras. You'll pass city views, greenery and in no time at all you'll arrive into Brighton station where our seaside adventure begins. Hello my love and welcome to Brighton! To kick things off, this is a quick Airbnb tour. We are literally two minutes by the sea. Like, let me show you. This is the view of the West Pier from the window and the beautiful sea behind it and I cannot wait to see the sunrise and sunset. Look, this person's just walking in a little door. I'll pop a link to this Airbnb if you're interested, but I love the design. It's minimalist, spacious, bright and open with an incredible view of the beach from the living room window. However, it is housed in a grade two listed building. So even though there's a small, tiny dark lift, it's not fully accessible. So it's worth bearing in mind when booking. And if you're new to this channel, hello, I'm Shu and I make videos all about travel, food and lifestyle. So enjoy what you're seeing, then please do consider subscribing for more videos like this and give this video a big thumbs up to help support the channel. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. I love and appreciate you. And now who's ready for some shellfish? I quickly booked an open table and headed over to the Copper Clam. By the way, I filmed the travel guide between the cusp of outdoor dining and indoor dining opening up again. So the meals in this video will reflect this. This restaurant is right by the seafront and I highly recommend the Whitstable oysters and the famous crab fries from here. I personally thought the Cataplana was overcooked but all in all it was a great surface. These oysters are well worth a try. After that I went on a sunset walk along the beach and I kept weirdly smiling to myself. Like you know those moments where you're just so happy to be somewhere and you want to stand there and take everything all in. Being back on the beach and avoiding the nasty seagulls and smelling the sea air just made me feel really really grateful to be there. Anyway, cheesy moment aside, I went back to the Airbnb to test out the fancy film projector and I called it a night. come to Hong Kong place which is down Preston Street. I've never been here before. I've ordered a Hong Kong style milk tea and apparently it is authentic. Oh my gosh it does actually taste like a Hong Kong diner. So I've ordered a wonton noodle. Having it to take away instead because it is starting to rain and it's still outdoor dining but yeah normally you can eat in and take away and also a few other bits as well so I'll show you once I get back. I love the wonton noodles from here, the HK style iced tea and also the egg waffles. Generous portions, the staff are great and a great grab and go spot with limited seating outdoors. Once the rain cleared up, I headed back out to the North Lanes. The sun is out and I'm now down the North Lanes, which apart from the seaside, is my favorite part of Brighton. I feel like it's where the magic is because here you can literally find all the spots. You could come here for jewelry, vintage shops, record shops, boutiques, food shops, cafes, a comedy place. Like there's so much here and it's just so magical. The vibe is great, it's charming, artsy. This is where I got my belly piercing when I was 16. I think I've had it removed now. But yeah, good little piercing shop. Apart from the beach, the North Lanes is my favourite part of Brighton. I love the vintage shops, the unique boutiques, the general vibe you feel walking down here, the smiley and friendly faces and what it represents. It's so colourful, happy and a great place to come shopping, especially if you're after something outside of the high street or chain stores. This is going to turn into an Asian food tour. Could get a tea tea for some bubble tea maybe. The service is so great, the guy is so, so lovely. Anyway, I ordered the green tea, brown rice tea with grass jelly, bubble tea. Well, not bubble tea, tea. Let's have a taste. Mm. Fresh. I love the brown rice taste. Tastes great, good pricing. It's so cute with the little things. Say cheese with the tea. I love it. Anyway, on to the next stop. 
what a surprise, I'm back on the beach. I went for another early evening stroll and then I headed over to a childhood favorite spot for dinner. I've been going to the Regency since I was a kid, so this well-known tourist hotspot will always have a special place in my heart. It's not the best in town, but for affordability, location, staff, and all-round experience, I love it. I always order lobster thermidor, though some of the dishes could have been more seasoned. Did I mention that the staff are great? The next morning, the rain hit and indoor dining still wasn't an option, so ordered a bunch of pizzas from Fata Mano. Great selection to pick from, including vegan options. It's known as the best place for pizza in Brighton for a reason, and I highly recommend it, especially to add a whole burrata as a topping. Do it! <laughs> I also went for a walk and came across these seagulls bathing, so yeah, enjoy. Good morning, my love. Today is Monday, the 17th of May, which means indoor dining. It's back up and running, so I'm currently at a place called Wolf Fox Chapters down Preston Street. And I've just ordered a strong coffee and brunch. I'm gonna work from here with my laptop inside for a few hours, and I'm just so excited. I'm going to order a smoked salmon eggs Benedict because to mark the first day of having brunch indoors. But yeah, this is a really, really great space. They've got like two sides of the restaurant. So they've got one side here, which is the restaurant, and you can have brunches, and then over there, you can have a co working space, have coffees, pastries, meetings. So yeah, really, really enjoyed the space. The staff are really friendly and they've got great um, vegan options as well and yeah, caters to a lot of different dietary requirements. So yeah, let me show you my coffee and my brunch. I'm so excited. This is a Grand Benedict with the smoked, smoked salmon, organic poached egg and brioche toast. And the girl is excited. Ta-da! Also the coffee is amazing. I'm pretty sure they're known for their coffees here and they do like a monthly membership. I ordered an oat latte with an extra shot of espresso and it is hitting the spot. brunch at Wolfbox which I recommend staff are amazing food was great coffee was strong and loved it I've now got two hours <laughs> until lunch at Petit Pois so I'm gonna walk over to the pier because the Sun has come out and it's warm I've got a bright outfit on today let's go show you around the pier it is trying to rain a little bit though but you know we're gonna persevere and go through it i'm now at brighton pier and it's so nice that like things are starting to open up again i've got a few rides opening up we've got like the horror hotel which i remember fondly from when i was younger also the health of skelter someone's clearly enjoying the horror hotel and spinny teacup got turbo crazy mouse that seems scary i remember going on this one a few times and it is actually really thrilling it makes you feel like you're going into the sea and it spins you round and round but yeah that's my favorite ride in the whole pier there is something so much fun about being back on the pier it was like one of the first places we went to when i was like three four years old is where i went on my first ever ride on roller coaster and it's just I just was so happy being back here. One of these days, I want to move back by the sea again. My heart is actually fluttering even just looking back at these cliffs and I'm just craving the beach. I walked over to Petit Pois for a beautiful French lunch and as you'd expect, there's a lot of great wine and cheese available, an extensive menu of French dishes and an espresso lunch one too. Do you like escargot? Mm. Whether it was a meat, seafood or veggie option, this was one of my favourite lunches I had in Brighton. Great quality, flavoured well, reasonably priced and it's well worth a visit when you're in town. I washed it down with a glass of white wine and then walked it off with a lazy stroll around town. Now if you know me, you know that your girl loves a speakeasy bar and the audio interfered with the music indoors but I found a place called The Plotting Parlour, tucked away in Kemp Town and I loved it. You sit in these cosy, dimly lit, intimate booths, the cocktails are seasonal and you feel as if you've just been transported into a different world. Add a few whiskies and a head it out for dinner. It's been a couple of hours and I'm now currently at Sushi Garden which is another childhood fave so this is the place where I tried like proper good sushi for the first time and also il dopperi for the first time so I thought why not pay a visit and cover it on the channel. I ordered a bunch of rolls, il dopperi, nikiri, I'm so excited. Let the food commence. I feel like on this trip all I've done is eat and walk and eat and eat and eat and walk and eat which to me is the perfect trip plus the seaside 
plus the great weather when it's not, you know, raining sporadically. So yeah, all the elements of a fantastic trip in Brighton. Enjoy the food. <laughs> I will always have a special place in my heart for this restaurant and I'm so pleased I get to go as indoor dining opened up again. I always order the Il Dombri when I'm here and it's the first place I ever had it. I love the sashimi platter, there's a great selection of dishes to suit all palates and it's a really good spot on Preston Street for sushi. Today is the next day and welcome to Shelter Hall and Shelter Hall is actually new to me. This is Brighton's first and only chef-led food market and we've got seven independent Sussex chef-led places to eat from. There's a wine bar, a bar and a craft beer place as well. You can either sit outside on the ground floor or the upper floor and you can book it as well. And when you get here you scan your order via a QR code on your table and the drinks get served to you and you can go and pick up the food as well. Everything is all spaced out. You've also got some wooden picnic tables to sit from as well. It's so cool, I love it here. Another five minutes also bright by the beach as well, so after you've eaten a lot, you can go and walk it off. I wish Shelter Hall was here when I grew up in Brighton. I love that it supports independent restaurateurs, encourages creativity and celebrates local and seasonal produce. There's also a big focus on the art, so expect live music, great food and a top-notch spot by the sea. One to come with your friends, family or a fun foodie date. I'm so excited, it looks so good! I don't want this chicken burger to end, it's so good. And the hot is actually hot sauce, but it's not hot for the sake of being hot. I'm in serious business when I've taken off my rings to eat this. I went for a walk to Brighton Marina and back and I passed by a lot of beach bars along the way. If you want a breezy, summery drink, then it's only a 10 to 15 minute away from the pier. The majority of places were closed in the marina, so I headed back down to, you guessed it, eat again. I've been meaning to visit the Flower Pot Bakery, and as soon as I saw the cold brew soft serve, I had to do it, and it did not disappoint. It's flavored subtly, but I love this with my flat white. <laughs> Half an hour later, it was time for dinner, baby, and booking is essential for the salt room, and it's not hard to see why. This was my favorite seafood dinner of the trip. The oysters weren't as good as a copper Clam, but the steak, sea bass, and the sides were fresh, beautifully presented, and high quality. The staff are knowledgeable, I love the interiors, and I left with a very full and happy tummy. Don't leave Brighton without coming here. The next morning, I headed to the Royal Pavilion for a tour. There's a lot of information about its history over the last 200 years, both at the Pavilion and on the website, but to give you a few of them, what started off as a small lodging house in a fishing town soon grew to become a seaside pleasure palace for King George IV. Now, George led a very luxurious life and had a fondness for fashion, the arts, architecture, gambling, and womanizing. The interiors and exteriors were heavily inspired by India and China, and it's reflected extensively in the walls, furnishings, and in most rooms. Though I did enjoy my visit here and reading up about it, some of the wording, i.e. exotic, it's very outdated. I understand it's in reference to the attitudes back then, but I would have liked to have seen more inclusivity with the choice of language to reflect the modern attitudes we have now. After the tour, I went to another childhood haunt for dim sum. It's great to see China Garden still operating and I recommend coming here for dinner dishes and their stir fry noodles over the dim sum. The staff are super attentive, friendly and even cut up each dish to be shared, which was a very sweet gesture. And a few hours later, it was time to meet up with my bestie, Hannah. Guess who I'm with? Hello! We are at the i360. Uh, which is the big glass platform sort of in Brighton. Um, I've only been on it once even though I live here, so it's nice to kind of come here again with Shu. Uh, it's raining a little bit, but there's still gonna be loads to see, so it'll be good. Yay! So we've just checked in for our flight and those staff are all wearing the BA outfits as well, so I feel like I'm legit just checked in. I'm just so excited, because I've always seen it, but I've never been. The flight times take 25 minutes, there's a bar upstairs as well, and you get 360, panoramic views across Brighton. Not sure how much we'll see today because it did start to rain, but I remain optimistic and I'm just so glad to be doing this with Hannah as well. And thank you to the team at i360 for gifting these tickets and for taking us soaring through to the sky. <laughs> Getting a glass of bubbly. <laughs> Whether you're a tourist or local, I really recommend the i360 for panoramic views of Brighton and beyond, especially on a clear and sunny day. It felt like such a treat to slowly soar up to the top and to find out more about the surrounding areas and walk around the podium to see views I would have otherwise missed. The staff are brilliant, they went out of their way to make sure everyone had a safe and enjoyable time, and we left a little bit merry and are very, very happy to have been on the flight. <laughs> Light. I guess I've got two colourful people that I've met, and who's this? 
<laughs> Our final stop of the day, newly opened restaurant for margaritas and tacos with Hannah and Luke. How do you pronounce it? Talok. 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 And it's the first day of opening, so we're very lucky to get a table. And we can't decide on what we want. Yeah, so we, yeah. right, oysters come in yeah. a set of three, so like there's three from us. There's so much to do from which actually we're not sat here for ages trying to figure out. This is the menu and I cannot actually decide. I think the octopus tacos sound amazing, but look at the lamb and pickled red onions. And the duck legs, braised duck leg and pressed pork belly. What's wasabina? Luke's trying to decide. I think I'm going to Yeah. Strong menu. Yeah. And of course, we're going to have to take it upon ourselves to try the drinks menu. So we've tried the whiskey, margarita, mezcal, Mexican beer. We spent most of the evening catching up. This is a really great spot for light bites and great margaritas. The pricing is on the mid-range side and I advise ordering about two to three dishes each. Don't come here hungry unless you want to splurge on the whole menu, but I enjoyed each dish. I would happily come back here again. And that's the end of this travel guide. I'm looking to visit Brighton more over the coming months, so there's more spots to cover. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope it inspired you to book a short and safe UK city break to escape the everyday, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye! <laughs>